Welcome back Jazz Bones. This is Chris here with a solo video. i um, been meaning to make this video for several days, but I picked up uh, the coronavirus again. I had it in January of this year and now I've got it again, so I haven't been able to really dig into anything or uh, make any videos uh, since last week. So today I've got a, as you can see by the title, a really special uh, unboxing to do and I'm going to show you all the box, open it up, and, and pull out some of the records, and then I'm going to go listen to a couple of them and come back and tell you my thoughts. So, of course, I'm talking about this behemoth here, the Bill Evans Riverside Recordings. It's 11 albums. They're all 45 RPM, so there's two LPs per album for a total of 22 records. You can see here, there's all the different records. Um, this is, of course, produced by Analog Productions. And this version was pressed at RTI. Sorry about the glare there. Let me get this plastic off of here. Yep, maybe. As you can see, it comes in a nice, you know, cardboard box, textured box. Um, Bill Evans Riverside Recordings, and again, here's all the, the records. Let's slide a couple of these out and look at them real quick. And then I'm going to listen to them and come back and tell you what I think. So, let's see here. Pull out the first one. So here is the first one. It's um, New Jazz Conceptions, Bill Evans, of course, with... Um, Teddy Kotick on bass and Paul Motion on drums. So this was his first record at Riverside. And these, the, the sleeves these come in are kind of thin and they're not like stoutens or anything, but they are shiny. And I was going to see. Interesting. So the records themselves come in these QRP-ish sleeves, not the standard um, RTI sleeves, which is nice. Um, but they don't have any printing on them, so it's kind of like the ones you get in the acoustic sound series. So that's the first one. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, the second one is of course Everyone Digs Bill Evans. Um, this is my favorite one so far that I've listened to. I've probably got five or six of these on uh, OJC or Twofers, which I'm going to be throwing up on Discog soon. But this one um, is Bill on piano, Sam Jones on bass, Philly Joe Jones on drum. And you can see here it's got all the liner notes, of course, but then it's got some, some uh, explanation of the sound, like these older Riverside's had, pretty neat. So yeah, I'm going to go listen to a couple of these records, and then we'll, uh, I'll come back and tell you my thoughts about the sound, and then we'll take a look at the rest of the records that are in the package. Thank you. Be right back. Hey everyone, I'm back. So I just finished listening to the first record, um, Bill Evans' uh, New Jazz Conception. Um, and my initial impressions are that the, the records sound amazing, of course. They're you know, analog production 45s. They would sound the way I ex expected them to sound. Um, the bass is, is really strong. Um, not overwhelming or anything. I mean, it, it sounds like it should, right? Um, man. Uh, Teddy Kotick plays bass on this one. I think it's his only record out of the... Group that he, that he plays bass on. This is also the only record that's, I believe, it's titled Bill Evans and not Bill Evans Trio or something else. Um, I had not heard this record before. I'm, I've I have heard that some people don't like it very much, but I I did not find that to be the case for me. Um, it's a mix of you know more up tempo stuff and then um, some some real gentle single playing by Bill on different tracks. Bill has a few tracks on here that he wrote, including five. Displacement, Waltz for Debbie, which everyone knows, of course, and then No Cover, No Minimum. Another highlight on this record for me was Conception by George Shearing. So yeah, I highly recommend this box set so far. The vinyl itself sounded perfectly quiet. It was flat. There was no texture pops, no defects, and they came. They were just clean out of the uh, out of the sleeve. I do not clean new records unless I feel like they need need to be cleaned, which, you know, if you do, that's fine. I know Felipe cleans all his records, but I, I don't usually do that unless they seem to need it, and this one did not. So now I'm going to go check out Everybody Digs Bill Evans, which I'm familiar with, so I should have a, 
a little bit better reference um, to talk about the differences I hear between it and maybe like an OJC. See you in a sec. All right, so I'm back again. I just finished listening to Everybody Digs Bill Evans. Um, this cover's really cool. It, it, it is a bunch of uh, statements about Bill Evans from various um, artists at the time, including Miles Davis, Samad Jamal, George Shearing, and Cannonball Adderley. Um, so Bill, apparently, uh, before even before his first record was recorded, didn't think that he was really ready to record records, and he didn't record his second one, this one, until 27 months after the first one. Um, so he just didn't think he was ready, and then th this cover was a surprise, as the story goes. Anyway, um, so on this one we've got, you know, Bill on piano, of course, Sam Jones on bass, Philly Joe Jones on drums. <clears throat> Having been familiar with this record... I was pretty blown away by the way it sounds, honestly. It's it's amazing. Um, specifically on Night and Day, which is a Cole Porter song. It's really up-tempo. Um, it starts off with Philly Joe just kind of doing a drum solo. And the the sound there, the, I mean, just the detail you can hear, like you can hear the drum kits echoing, you know, as he's, as he's striking the drum head. You can hear the decay of, of the drum itself right um yeah it's just amazing sounding the rest of the record is equally uh, sonically pleasing i guess just really nice um really like this one this is one of my favorite records of his that i already own i've got an older ojc copy um it's kind of beat up but i'm probably gonna do a shootout before i sell those just for fun so there'll probably be another video coming for that um everybody digs bill evans Amazing. All right, so what I want to do now to wrap up the video is look at the box contents a little bit more, go through the albums. There's a, a booklet here that we can look at. Um, we'll start with that. So this is a little booklet that it comes with. Um, it's got essays and, and pictures in it, of course. Uh, here's a neat page that has all the album covers in it as an example. Um, big essays, I'm sure. So I'll, I'll spend some time with that when I have some more time. Let's check out the different records that are part of this. Uh, so we looked at the first two. Portraits and Jazz, huge record. Uh, you know, any Bill Evans fan knows this record. This is the first record he did with Scott LaFaro and, and Paul Motion. Um, greatness there. Next up we got uh, Explorations, Bill Evans Trio. So this again features Bill Evans, Scott LaFaro, and Paul Motion. After that, we've got a couple of live records, probably a couple of his most famous records ever, including this one, um, you know, Sunday at the Village Vanguard. This one says featuring featuring Scott LaFaro, which is kind of awesome. And then lastly, for the LaFaro albums, we've got Waltz for Debbie. And this one was taken from the same sessions as the, the other one we just looked at, the Village Vanguard one. Unfortunately, shortly after this was taped, Scott LaFerro was killed in a car accident, which really set set Bill back emotionally. Um, it just devastated him. So he took some time off after Scott died, and then the next one that he came out with was the Moonbeams. And this one we've got um, Chuck Israels took over the place of Scott LaFerro, along with Paul and Bill. Next up, we've got an interesting one. This one's Cannonball Adderley with Bill Evans. So, Know What I Mean is the title of it. Um, so this one obviously has Cannonball and Bill, and then it's got Percy Heath on bass and Connie Kay on drums, which is cool. That's like half of the, that's like half of the Modern Jazz Quartet. After that, we've got Interplay, which is a quintet record he did. And so this one has, you know, Bill on it, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Percy Heath, Jim Hall, and Philly Joe Jones. So Philly Joe Jones making another showing here. And the last two, here is one called How My Heart Sings. This is a great record. I've got an a original of this. I'll probably do a shootout at some point between this one and that OG. Um, this one's, again, Bill Evans, Chuck Israels, and Paul Motion. And then lastly... We've got Bill Evans' trio at Shelley's Manhole in Hollywood, California. It's another live record. Not heard this one. Looking forward to it. 
This one's got a different lab. It's Bill Evans on piano, Chuck Israel's on bass, and then Larry Bunker on drums. And that was recorded in May of 63. So those are all the records that are part of the package. Again, the two records I listened to sounded absolutely fantastic. I would highly recommend this box set if you're able to afford it or want to make yourself be able to afford it. Um, and if not, the OJCs sound amazing. The two furs I've got uh, sounded really nice. And then, obviously, the originals are going to sound good if you can find clean copies for affordable prices, which may be a bit of a challenge. So I would say, so far, overall, I'm very happy with my purchase, and I look forward to exploring the rest of this box. Um, I'm going to try to do some jazz snacks with these other records so I can give you all my thoughts as you know, time goes forward over the next few weeks of each one of the records in the set and maybe do some shootouts with some of the OJCs and tupers I have. Um, and until then, please like and subscribe and then leave me some comments telling me your thoughts on the box, your favorite Bill Evans records, or whatever you have to say. Thank you so much. Bye.